The main mission of my laboratory is to understand how macromolecules can encode information that can be used to self-assemble nanomaterials with custom properties. We're also interested in using these self-assembly rules to make novel photonic and electronic nanomaterials. My research laboratory is unique because we are an interdisciplinary group of scientists with students from chemistry, physics, material science, and chemical engineering backgrounds. And while we primarily do experiments to study materials, we also use tools from data mining and machine learning. This is because the soft materials we create are very difficult to model from first principles. So we need to have alternate ways to learn the physics and chemistry that describe how self-assembly happens in macromolecular systems. Most of my research right now focuses on how DNA can be used as a programmable molecular building block for nanomaterials. Specifically, we're using DNA's nucleobase specific interactions with certain metals to create the tiniest of nanoparticles, which are called nanoclusters, and also to create tiny atomic wires of metal. In addition to this work on DNA, we're also interested in using other macromolecules like block copolymers and peptides, all for the goal of creating self-assembling photonic or electronic nanomaterials. One of our current projects that I'm really excited about right now is to develop novel fluorophores, which emit light in the near infrared spectrum. The reason why this is important is because biological tissues are much more transparent to near infrared light than they are to visible light that we can see with our eyes. So by creating tiny molecules or nanoparticles that can emit near infrared light, we could use these as bio labels in order to image deep inside tissues or even whole organisms. By building off the approaches that we've developed for designing visibly fluorescent silver clusters, we're now turning towards the near infrared spectral region, trying to design the largest silver clusters stabilized by DNA that have ever been made, because these will emit within the near infrared tissue transparency windows. Since we are using machine learning to try to discover new um, DNA stabilized silver nanoclusters that have um, emission wavelengths in the near infrared, we want to have large data sets so that we can train the machine learning algorithm. And that's why we're using high throughput experiments. And we are using the robot liquid handler so that we can produce um, many different samples in short periods of time. We are synthesizing 384 different clusters in about 20 minutes. We are also using the robot so that this way we can um, reduce the amount of time of time that we need to synthesize them and also reduce the variability between samples due to human error. The DNA we use to stabilize our silver nanoclusters is 10 to 30 basis long. This means that there's a huge number of possible DNA sequences that we can use to stabilize our clusters. We use machine learning to try and predict the properties of these clusters so that we can create targeted synthesis and try and synthesize clusters, allowing us to save time and money and not having to sample the entire sequence space for the clusters we're looking for. The DNA sequence will determine the size and shape of the nanocluster through the different interactions between the four different nucleobases with the silver. And the total number of reduced silver atoms will determine the emission color of the nanoclusters. My group and a lot of other people around are very interested in uh, characterizing new hormones, uh, endocrine factors that circulate in the blood. And so we got really excited by Stacy's finding these, these dyes that they've developed, specifically because we think that it could give us the ability to tell us where these molecules are going in the blood and the body and where they're acting upon. In the long term, my vision for my research laboratory is to be able to understand in general how macromolecules encode chemical information that can then be used to drive organization on the nanoscale. I envision that we could be able to create novel nanomaterials that we can't access right now with the solid state materials paradigm to create things that are dynamic, that can interface directly with the body, and that can create and manipulate light in ways that we can't achieve right now.